What's up Norberg Nation, how's it going? Finally, I'm back in front of the camera recording a video and I'm so excited to do this. It's been a pretty difficult past couple of months for me. I had a stretch of about nine weekends in a row uh, where I was pretty slammed racing every weekend. And obviously last weekend, I tried to record a video but the hurricane kind of got involved in that uh, and threw a wrench into my plans. But before we get into the video for today, um, I just wanna say that there was a lot of Floridians um, and a lot of racers affected by the hurricane this weekend. More specifically, there was one family that I know um, from the racing community, the Kolar family, um, and they lost their place of living due to this hurricane. If you guys want to help out and support a good carding family who was hit with some very unfortunate circumstances, please make sure to click the link um, in the description down below and see what you can do to help out this family. Obviously, there's a lot of people affected by the storm in Florida, um, and there's a big racing community as well in Florida. So if you want to help them out and more specifically help a family that's been directly impacted by the storm, please feel free to check out that link down below and see what you can do to help. So with that being said, let's get into today's video, which is how do you manage your tires throughout a race? Now there's no secret to managing your tires. When it comes down to it, if you're a karting driver, you're in the business of sprint racing. You're not really in the business of running one set of tires for 60 odd laps. The most you'll ever run on a set of tires is gonna be from 20 to 25 laps. And even in endurance racing, which I've done, which can go up to like 50 laps, the entire time I'm pushing as hard as I can. There's not really too much strategy that goes into saving your tires for the whole race. In a sprint race, you wanna use your tires as much as possible, but there is some strategy to managing your tires. You don't wanna go out of the gate and just blitz as hard as you can and just raise the temperature of your tires so high that there's no grip for the end of the race when you really wanna capitalize on other drivers' mistakes. So in today's video, I'm gonna break down how I drive at the start of a race, the middle of the race, and the end of the race to let you guys know the different strategies that I use to make sure my tires don't ever get overheated. So let's get started. At the start of a race, your tires are gonna be at the lowest pressures they'll be for the entire run. If you do your tire pressure correctly, um, in a pre-final, it's gonna take two, three laps for the tires to come in. In a final, it might take four, five, or six laps for the tires to come up to a good pressure to where you feel comfortable pushing the go-kart. But the question is, what do you do when the tires are at this low point? You obviously can't drive as deep as you want to because then the cart's gonna slide and you're gonna lose that grip at the end of the run by raising the temperature of your tires too early. So the way I get around this is I listen to what the go-kart's telling me. Now this is something that I've stressed a lot in other videos, but Paying close attention to what the go-kart's telling you and what the tires are telling you is a great indication of what to do while you're driving. The main thing I'm focusing on is trying to maximize the grip of the go-kart. When I enter the corner on lower tires, I obviously know the cart's not gonna have as much grip as I think it will. So I try and push to the limit that I think these tires can handle. One of two things is gonna happen. I'm either going to exceed that limit or I'm gonna be underneath that limit. So once I pick up on that sign that it's either sliding or I'm not going to the corner as fast as I could, I'll change that for the next corner. If the cart's sliding, I'm gonna back the corner up a little bit. I'm gonna brake a little bit sooner and make sure I'm using as much grip as possible through the corner. The only thing that can overheat your tires and make them useless at the end of the run is by sliding. If you're riding right on that limit the entire time of the session, you're not gonna overheat the tires. As long as you're not sliding the go-kart around excessively, the tires are gonna perform well throughout the entire run. So remember, in the beginning of the session, try not to panic if the cart is not where it needs to be. Stay calm and try to push the cart just to the limit. Try not to exceed that limit as much as possible and just wait a few more laps for the cart to come in. Now, if you've done your tire pressures correctly, three or four laps have gone by and you're starting to feel some grip coming into the go-kart. Now, this is a mistake that I've seen a lot of drivers make is that they don't correct their driving to accommodate the new levels of grip for their go-kart. They've either overdriven the entire time or they're underdriving and they're not increasing their speed as they gain more grip out of the tires. The way I know that the cart is getting more grip and the tires are starting to come in is I start to feel the tires carve on the exit of the corner and I'm not using as much racetrack as I previously was. If I'm going through the corner and I'm not using as much speed as the tires can take, I'm not gonna use all of the racetrack on the exit of the corner. If I go through one or two corners and I notice that I'm not using all the racetrack that I previously was, I'm gonna increase my speed in the next corner and fix that. 
That way I'm adjusting to the amount of grip that the tires are giving, therefore taking advantage of all of the grip possible. Again, there's gonna be a time where I exceed that limit and I go into a corner a little bit too quickly and then the back end is gonna step out. When that happens, I gotta make a mental note of that and bring the cart back down to its limits and stay within its limits. Again, you're not gonna overheat the tires by driving on the limit. The only time you'll overheat the tires is by exceeding the limit. So stay right at that limit. When I'm at this middle portion of the race and the cart is at its peak performance, that's where I'm gonna drive as hard as I can. I'm not gonna save anything on the table right now because we've set up the go-kart for in the middle of the race to drive this way. I wanna be using all the grip necessary. I don't wanna overdrive again. That's the key thing. I'm not gonna overdrive at this point. I'm trying to maximize the grip that the tires have given. Now, as you get towards the latter portion of the race, you're gonna start having a little bit of fall off on the tires. Again, this is a moment where drivers tend to just continue to drive the same way they did in the middle of the race. The tires came up to temperature in the middle of the race, they're braking at a certain point, and they just keep braking at that point as the tires are starting to fall off. And by the end of the race, now they're overdriving again. They're overdriving because the limits of the tires have changed. And this is again where I stress, listen to the go-kart. If the cart starts to slide towards the end of the race, it means you're gonna start having to back that cart up a little bit. Ideally, if you hit the tires correctly, the last lap or last two laps, the cart is gonna have a little bit of fall off. So make sure you take note of that. For me, whenever the cart starts to fall off, I'm realizing that on the exit of the corner, I'm using more track than I should. The cart's wanting to slide off a little bit more. When I go to get on the gas and that inside tire sets down, the cart wants to step out a little bit and it makes it really nervous on the exit of the corner. Sometimes they'll get an understeer because I've really been relying on those front tires during the whole race. And at the end of the race, they're starting to fall off and I'm just chewing those front tires up. When you notice that, you do have to back the cart up a little bit and listen to what the cart's telling you. If you don't listen to what the cart's telling you those last two laps, when you need to be taking advantage of other drivers whose carts are also falling off, you're just gonna be slow and you're not gonna be able to take advantage of those opportunities. So when it gets to this point in the race, make sure again that you're listening to the go-kart. This is all stuff that needs to happen from corner to corner. This isn't something you can take an entire lap to figure out. If you feel like the cart is starting to slide in two consecutive corners, the next corner you go into, back the corner up a little bit. These are adjustments you have to make on the fly. If there's only two or three laps left in this race, you've got no time to make that adjustment. You have to make it right then and there. So that's it, you guys. There's no real magic technique to managing your tires. It's just paying attention to those minute details that the cart's telling you. The more in touch you get with your go-kart, the faster you're gonna be because you can understand what it needs corner to corner and fix that so that you can maximize the possibilities in your race. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments down below if there's any other topics that you guys want me to hit on. Also, make sure to follow me on my Instagram, my Facebook, and my TikTok. I've been trying to post a lot of awesome racing content on there as well, so make sure to follow that as well. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.